Can you guys tell that I'm chilly today? I have like this giant sweater on and a big fuzzy blanket. I'm going to get hot in about 20 minutes. Hey guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I am excited because today we are going to be talking about the best products of 2019 in the sort of high-end, more premium category. In case you missed it, I did a full video on Thursday, which went through all of my best of drugstore. So go and check that out if you have not already. I'll link it at the end for you guys. And now you know what? We're gonna zoom in. We're gonna put some makeup on and oh, I'm excited about these products. I know I got excited on Thursday, <laughs> watch the video, but I can't help it, okay? I get really excited about makeup. Oh my gosh, I'm already too hot. I regret everything. Look at this little guy. What are you? Are you in my ponytail? Oh no, you're not. You're just hooked onto a bobby pin. Oh, story of my life. Okay, so I think today I wanna start with the face because in the last video I started with my eyes and I just feel like mixing it up. We're gonna mix it up. So let's start with primer. And this primer, I talked about it in Thursday's video, but this one has to be like my all time favorite of 2019. And it is the Cover FX Gripping Primer. It has a little bit of a firming element to it as well. And it's very sticky, very tacky, so that it feels like it's just gripping the makeup to the skin better. And so I need to use less powder to further set the product. So my skin isn't going to look as cakey or powdery. Even like underneath my eyes right here, like I find that it just helps everything to like stick a little better. Concealer isn't gonna get all like creasy and gross, you know? And she's a beaut. She is so good. Look at that. Clear gel, just barely moving. It's like <laughs> sticky tack. Oh, I shouldn't be testing that. I bet it's gonna drop in my lap. I like to like pat, like smooth and then pat because it is very like tacky. And then I find that the best way for this product to stick to my face and not pill because it is again more of like a tacky base is I use a sponge for when I apply my foundation and pat the product in versus rolling it on. I feel like that gives like a really, it, it doesn't work. Oh, love this stuff so much. A little bit underneath the eyes, get that all in there. I'm now I'm gonna go wet my sponge, which I continuously forget to do, excuse me. Just waddling like a penguin over here. Waddle, 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 waddle. Oh. So now that I have my sponge, we're gonna go on to foundation slash concealer. I actually use this product for both. And it is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Longwear Foundation and Concealer. Oh my gosh. This stuff is so good. It does not crease on me. It stays put. It is full coverage, but it still looks like skin. It blurs everything out. It does not move all day. And I will use it under my eyes as well as the rest of my face. That's why I have two different shades here because I kind of like to mix and match. Also, depending on how much self tanner I have on. Doesn't look like I have a lot on, but I'm really the shade of the wall behind me. And what's interesting about this, and you can use it a bunch of different ways, obviously, depending on how you like to apply your makeup. But one, they have a pump, which is the easiest way, and that's what I do for all over my face. But also on the inside here, they have a little doe foot applicator. So you can apply it like concealer if you prefer to apply it that way. I usually go for a mixture of MN4 and MN2 and then apply like the lighter one a little bit more underneath the eyes just to kind of add a little bit of brightness. Um, but this is the, this is the, I was gonna say mascara, not the mascara with hundred different shades. Can you imagine a hundred shades of mascara? That's too many. That's just far too many. I mean, it's too many shades to have black and also blackest black. Just pick one. No one is sitting there and being like, you know what I want? I want a little less black mascara. I want almost like a gray black. Anyway, that was off topic. This is the foundation concealer that launched with a hundred different shades. Uh, I find that these two are my favorites and the only reason I have two of them is because I like to brighten under the eyes a little bit, um, but the formula is incredible. Incredible. So I'm gonna pump. A little into my hand here. The formula itself, it's not too runny, it's not too thick, it's kind of in between. It's the mama bear of Goldilocks and the three bears. No wait, she was too soft. It was the baby bear that was just right. Again, as always, I don't know why I put on earrings when I'm doing this, honestly Rachel. We start on the outside of the face and work our way in. That way I always make sure that I don't forget this area because otherwise it looked just super awkward. Look at that. 
Like you can see the difference between my skin and uh, and not my skin. Which one do you guys like to apply first? Do you apply foundation first and then your eye makeup or do you do eye makeup and then foundation? I am personally team eye makeup first and then foundation because otherwise I feel like I just ruin <laughs> all the foundation that I just worked hard on. And then two, and applying that underneath the eye. I feel like I just spent the whole video talking about how much I love this foundation, but I really do it so good. <laughs> My, my dad found some foxes in his backyard and is sending us pictures. Thanks, Dad. I like how it's a conversation between my mom and dad who are in the house together. Now, normally I would go in now and just set everything, but I find that for this particular product, what I really like is that it kind of dries down and I don't need as much setting powder to like get everything like stuck to the face, especially with the gripping primer too. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my brows now, then I'm gonna go in with like setting powder and bronzer and all that stuff. I will sometimes like throughout just to make sure nothing creases, I'll just kind of go through and like just do a little quick, quick touch up, especially cause I'm also, you know, talking and doing my makeup. We're gonna start by soaping the brows and I'm using one from L'Occitane. I think I bought this like ages ago because uh, Katie and Desi were talking about it when like soap brows first like became a, a thing that I was aware of. And so I went out and I bought it. And I mean, do you really need a big fancy soap? Probably not, but it works real well. So I don't know. We're just going to put a little bit of soap on, brush those hairs up. I like to start with the soap first and then go in with the pencil. I really like soaping the brow because I find that it kind of almost creates clumps of hair, which give the illusion of that big, like bushy, full brow, which is something I personally am just a really big fan of. Um, and it also helps to keep the, the brow sort of staying like upright in the spot that I want them. So once I have like a, an approximate position for all of the brow hairs, I kind of like press the soap in and I just find that that helps everything to stay put even though I'm just going to go in with pencil next. And the brow pencil I'm gonna use, this is the Hourglass Arch Brow Micro Sculpting Pencil, which is a great one. It's almost oval in shape, very thin, and creates like a really nice brow hair effect. Though I will say, if you haven't watched the drugstore video yet, the pencil I use there is probably the one I use the most, and it's so good and super affordable. But for high-end brow products, this thing took the cake for me. It creates nice definition. It's not too thick and clumpy and it stays put a really long time. So yeah, big fan. I can't talk and do my brows. All right, brows are done. So let's go on to setting, finally. So this setting powder is my all time favorite of 2019. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was my favorite of 2018 too. It is a game changing, blurring setting powder. It just makes your skin look absolutely flawless. It is by Elizabeth Arden. It's their high performance blurring loose powder. This powder is just, it's everything. Like I will use it for every different type of foundation wherever I possibly can. It doesn't oxidize. It doesn't uh, turn really super yellow. Sometimes some powders will turn really yellow on me, especially underneath the eyes. This does not do that. It sets everything really well and it doesn't crease or look chalky or cakey. So I will take some on my little little velour puffy thing and I'll just set it like right underneath the eyes, side of the mouth, and then anything that's like left over on the puff, I'll just kind of like dab over everything else. But I don't find that I need it there. So now let's go on to bronzer. This is a duo from Jouer. It's their light medium bronzer duo. And this one is just like a nice combination. I can deepen it a little bit. I can go a little bit lighter. I really enjoy it. I probably used the drugstore one a little bit more, but you know what? This is also real good and something I used a lot of in 2019. And blush, I gotta say, I really liked the Buxom Wanderlust, the primer infused blush. I am such a big fan of layering a ton of blush on. <laughs> If that wasn't clear from any of my videos this year. And this one is such a pretty shade and goes on really beautifully. 
I do multiple layers because, again, I <laughs> really like blush. And then for highlight, I mean, obviously, obviously my highlight favorite for 2019 was the Layers Highlighting Palette that I created with Pixi, my all-time favorite layering, customizing, highlighting palette in love, hands down. But another one that I really liked is by Charlotte Tilbury. This is their uh, Beauty Light Wand. This is an easy highlight. So it's a cream-based formula. And so basically what you can do, like you can either just like like pop it on like that or I'll sometimes just like put a little bit on my fingertips like so but you can see it's very very blinding or I'll use it underneath my highlight as sort of like a first step you know see like just like a really soft glow you know oh my gosh it's getting very bright here hang on what happens when I leave my blinds open like it's been cloudy all day and then just like boom they all dissipated so been adjusting my lighting hopefully that's better so now I want to go on to the eyes and there are two palettes that have a very special place in my heart and I loved this year but actually you know what they're primarily back half of the year then now that I think about it and I find that happens a lot with these types of videos that are like an end of the year compilation of all of the favorites unless they are products that like for example the Elizabeth Arden powder and just like like they could not be replaced Oftentimes I'll find new things and things that just speak to me in that particular moment, whether it's a trend I'm really loving or a formula I'm really loving. And so sometimes it's just like that back half stuff that like really I have a lot of love for. So the first palette should come as no surprise. It is the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette. Um, I love Tati and I think she did a great job with the formula of this product and I'm excited to see what is in the pipelines for her and her brand. I'm very, very excited and happy for her. Um, but the, the product, the layout, of this particular palette is beautiful. The um, the textures of all of the different products are beautiful. And I've used this palette in a number of videos now. I have talked about it, swatched it, played with it, and just shared my, my thoughts and opinions on it. I think it is a fantastic, fantastic product. And it's something that I use daily for my makeup. And then the other one, I believe it launched in the summertime, if I'm not mistaken, is the Urban Decay Naked Honey Palette. Uh, again, lots of pretty neutrals, a lot of more golden, almost yellow undertone, which just speaks to me. <laughs> I just really like those undertones. Um, and I thought it was a really great palette. And honestly, I haven't fallen in love with a naked palette in a really long time, honestly. And like, this is the first one that I got really excited about this year. So I had to include it and it's one that I use a lot of. So I think today, I think I want to do more of like a liner look today, actually. And I've used the Tati palette in a number of my more recent videos. So I think maybe today we'll play with the naked palette just to kind of switch it up. But I will link those um, videos for you guys in case you are interested. Maybe you got the palette for Christmas or you bought it when it first came out and you're looking for other ideas. You can go and check those out. But I just really want to do like a wing liner today. I'm just, I'm in the mood, you know? <laughs> like honestly, like I might even just do Sweet and Swarm. These two here, maybe a touch of Keeper, but like maybe, I think that's it. Like I want to keep it really, really light with shadows today. I'm trying to apply my shadow and like, <laughs> baby keeps like kicking me. <laughs> all over and now they have hiccups. I actually just filmed an updated pregnancy cravings, like eating all of my pregnancy cravings video um, that will go up on my Rich Loves Life channel on Saturday. If you wanna see more of like me and Chris and Dibs and like all that kind of stuff, we do a lot of cooking, testing out Amazon gadgets, pregnancy gadgets, uh, viral recipes, like all sorts of fun stuff. It's been really fun doing the videos over there. Lots of like baking stuff, lots of cookies. You guys know I love cookies. I am a cookie monster, you know. So I'm excited. Lots more fun videos to come on that channel as well. So go and check that out if you have not already. I want to add a little underneath the eyes too. I know I said I wasn't going to use this palette, but I really like it. So I'm just going to use it anyway. I want to add a little touch of some of the metallic just to my lid. Just a little bit. Just a light dusting, if you will. Yeah. Yep, that's what I wanted. And if I really wanted to punch up this metallic, I'd apply it with like a wet brush and it just, it really makes it go like 
over the top. It's awesome. Now it's getting too dark in here. Is that better? Hopefully that's better, honestly. Lighting, it's a constant struggle. So for liner, I actually have two different types that I want to play around with today and two favorites. One is by NARS, is their high pigment longwear liner. Um, these are the two brown shades that I probably use the most for tight lining. They are creamy, they are pigmented, they stay put. Oh, seriously, I cannot get enough. Like look how stumpy <laughs> that pencil is. <laughs> Rachel. Sharpen your pencils, my gosh, girl. There we go. That's better. And this is probably what I do the most often is just tight lining with a, like a dark brown. I just find that it's a great way of adding some definition without having to be too precise. <laughs> and then for a liquid liner we're gonna use today, I'm going to be using my Fenty Beauty Fly Liner. This isn't super new, but it's the one that I use the most. It is the one that is the most reliable for me. And you know what? I just really loved it for this year. It's super smooth, easy, easy to apply. And I get a great wing out of this liner too. And I struggle sometimes with wings. Wing liners, man. Sometimes you have really good wing liner days and sometimes it's just a travesty. Now I will be silent. We need silence for doing a winged liner. All oh, the concentration, I need full silence, like a golf game. All right, are they even? Close enough. So now we're gonna go on to the magical, magical. mascara duo that I have not stopped using this entire year. Whenever I want like big, bold, over the top, super long and dramatic lashes and I don't wanna deal with falsies, this combo is so money. Mascara number one is the YSL The Shock Mascara. I actually just ran out of my last one, so I'm on bottle number two. And it's so extra and it's so expensive and I can't stop using it. It is so good. So I'm gonna do one eye with mascara, one eye without, so you guys can see the difference with the two mascaras that I'm gonna to use today. So we're gonna start with the YSL one. It's a much thicker formula and I find that the first time that I use it, fresh bringing it home, it, it can be a little bit messy. But I find every single use after that first one is dynamite. Just such thick, over the top lashes, yes please. And then on top of it, I love layering the Wander Beauty Mile High Club Volume and Length Mascara. This one is great. It's in like a very squishy tube, so you can kind of manipulate the formula a little bit. And if it gets starts getting dry, you can kind of just warm it up and move it around a bit, which is really nice. Um, but this one in particular, I like for the tips of the lashes because I find that it gives them some length. And also for the lower lashes because I find that I don't get like raccoon eyes by the end of the day with this mascara. Oh, it's so good. I actually need to get another another bottle of this stuff. I am running low. It is unacceptable. And we'll do the lower lashes. And I'll show you guys my trick for making sure that your mascara doesn't run all over like your concealer. This works every single time for me. With this particular, I almost thought I got it on my nose there for a second. With this particular mascara, um, more so than any other one, this trick is so good. Again, just one coat of mascara of the of the shock and then this one on the tips. Like, right? I hope it's as dramatic on camera as it is in person. Cause wowza. Should I do another layer? You know, let's just do another layer. That is absolutely bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Let's just get the other side, you know, Matching, it's feeling a little self-conscious right now. Understandably so. And then the trick that I always do is I will take a little bit of that Elizabeth Arden powder on a clean uh, eyeshadow brush, and then I will just dust it once the lower lashes are nice and dry. I'll kind of dust it against the tips of the lower lashes and right under where it might hit. Um, and it just completely eliminates all of those like little raccoon eye spots. Does anyone else get those with mascara? It's so annoying. But this one doesn't happen. 
I don't know why, but the, with the Wonder Beauty one, I never get it. So now I wanna share a couple of lip products that have just really wowed me this past year. One is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. This is their Reshape and Resize Lip Liner in Pillow Talk. This isn't super new to them, but it's something that I have been really enjoying and I've been wearing like underneath a gloss or just like on its own. It's really pretty. The shade, the uh, it's not too uh, grainy. I find sometimes I just, not a big fan of lip liners. You may have noticed I don't wear them very often, but this, she's an exception. Not a big like overliner. Not really my thing. See, the color's really subtle. I just outlined it um, just because I have other <laughs> lip products that I want to use. Um, but I just want to show you guys the color and just, it, like, it, it just works really well. I like it. And then for lip color, um, my, my lips look crazy right now. I'm so not used to like, just like outlining them and not doing anything. I have fallen in love with that whole blurred lip stain almost kind of effect. Like it's matte but it's still very pillowy and soft and very forgiving. And so there are two different formulas that I've been really loving. One is by Burberry. This is their Lip Velvet Crush, which is a sheer matte stain. This one has been really nice. And then the Too Faced Peach Puff Diffuser Mattes. These are two of my favorite like go-to everyday shades. One is in, what colors? We have in the flesh and peach into the choir. They're both really nice. Let's use this one. See what I mean? Really, really soft. I really like it. Kind of almost want to put a little bit of this one on top. Is that weird? Oh, love me a nudie peach. And then if I am going to do a gloss and like, I, I do love a good gloss, the Hourglass Unreal Volumizing Glosses that they launched are incredible. They have such a beautiful mirror-like finish. They aren't sticky or tacky, but they still have that nice full effect. So even if your lips are dry, it doesn't enhance that at all. Like it just looks very full and even. The colors are gorgeous. This one is, uh, this is Enchanted, um, but I have a number of them. And usually it'll just pop a little, like right in the center, you know? Just like that, just for like a little, like a little something. There are two setting sprays. The one that I have been using for majority of the year, I wanna say, is the Cover FX Dewy Finish Setting Spray. It's got a really, really fine mist, which I really like. It has a nice dewy finish, which again, I also really like. Not a big like matte face kind of girl, but it's not glittery in any way. It just gives a nice dewiness without looking very, like greasy by the end of the day, which some do, they'll say they're luminous. And then the other day I'm like, oh, it's like I rolled in a pile of olive oil. And then the other one I've been really enjoying is the Tarte Double Duty Beauty um, Stay Spray. This one has been also really, really good. Very fresh, it almost like, I wanna say it's like a coconut scent. Not a coconut, cucumber. Yeah, it's got like this fresh kind of a scent to it. It's not too overpowering. It's got a great spray to it. It's a little bit more aggressive than the, the cover effects one, though it still just goes on really beautifully. I don't find that I get like spots on my skin or anything like that. Um, but yeah, they're both really, really good. Let's just use the cover effects one today. Oh my goodness, I love these videos. I get to have everything that's my favorite on my face. Tell me in the comments some of your favorite products from 2019, leave them down below. I hope you are all having an amazing, amazing 2020 so far and stay tuned because we are doing a very special video on Tuesday on Rachel's Life where we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of like gender prediction tests and it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then another new video on Thursday, yay! I'm on a roll in January with videos. Feels good. But I hope you have an amazing rest of your Sunday. Thank you again for watching. Check out these other videos in case you have missed them. Subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you guys all on Thursday. Love you all. Mwah.